Call I, you show me already? Rain, fire, money, curry, and everything set. Let's do this. We are kings and priests of God right now. And I want to show that to you uh, very simply, very easily. That starting here in Revelation 1, where it says, He has made us kings and priests unto God and His Father. To Him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. And I want to show you, this is not new this is shared by a good number of people and recognize that we are kings and priests right now if you don't remember anything if you don't remember anything from tonight remember this I'm a king we are priests of God and of Christ right now we are kings and priests of God right now and so let me share this real quick the Aerosmith song kings and queens and guillotines so if we go to Revelation 20 let's break this down a little bit okay and I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. So let's go back to Revelation 1 where it says, The revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Now three key words here to recognize. Signified. Angel and John okay so in Revelation 20 the angel is giving a vision to John signifying the things which must shortly come to pass so when John says I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand this is an image or a vision given to John for us to see the things that must shortly come to pass and he laid hold on the dragon that old serpent which is the devil and Satan and bound him a thousand years now the way to properly understand this is to simply study the Bible and believe what the Bible says alright so <clears throat> let me make this easy for you to understand when the dragon, that old serpent, the devil, and Satan is bound for a thousand years, this happens when Jesus takes the nation of God from them let's see if I can find a verse therefore I say unto you the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof so if we go back to Exodus 19 for example alright and we'll see that God has made us he says go tell the people of the children of Israel you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation right when God tells Moses to tell the people that you shall be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation He's talking about a circle of people. Okay, it, within the circle of people is the kingdom of God, the holy nation, the people of God. All right, now let's go to 1 Peter chapter 2. 
we see that we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that we should show forth the praises of him who has called us out of darkness and into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but now are the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. All right, so we go back to this time period in Exodus 19. There was a circle of people. Within that circle was the kingdom of of God, God watched over this circle of people. All right. Now, <clears throat> Jesus comes along and he takes the nation of God from them and gives it to whosoever believes. Right. So there's no longer this circle in which God watches over, and outside of the circle is the nations which the devil is deceiving or guiding if you will all right and when it says here he laid hold of the dragon and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more that's saying that he was deceiving those nations which were outside of the circle all right so that's not going to happen anymore because jesus says whosoever believes in me or, you know, has everlasting life. Right? Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? He's taking the nation of God from a circle of people and making it available for whosoever believes in me. All right. Until the thousand years are finished. Now, when the thousand years are finished, it is the end of the world. All right. Now, when the thousand years are finished, the the devil will be loosed, or Satan will be loosed, and why will what will he do when he's loosed? He will go out and deceive the nations again, like he was doing in the time of Exodus 19. Right? So in Exodus 19, you got a circle of people, the people of God, the children of Israel, and outside of that circle, Satan was deceiving the nations and so inside the circle the people of God were had to uh, they had to be obedient to God and they could not go after other gods and if they were lacking in faith they would go after other gods and be, be deceived by those nations outside of the circle of God right makes sense doesn't it so um, God, or, uh, God was always watching over and, um, you know, correcting the children of Israel, the children of God. If they would fall, then there was correct, uh, correction needed to be made, and prophecies were given. And all, this is all throughout the Bible. Okay. So, when Satan is loosed, he gathers together the nations. And as it was in Exodus 19, they were surrounded by the circle of, of uh, people that were the people of God. Now, at the end of the world, they will once again encircle us, right? Compass the camp of the saints about. Now, when this happens at the end of the world, we are going to be up in the air with the Lord Jesus Christ. All right. When he when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, first the dead in Christ shall rise, and then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. All right. So we're up in the air, just like what we read in Revelation 3. I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. So we're up in the air. Our enemy is gathered at our feet. All right, and this is prophecy that goes all the way back to Genesis 3, where it says, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. All right? Till I make thine enemies thy footstool. Right? This is a prophecy that goes all the way back and is 
echoed all throughout the Bible. All right, and this is all this is saying that he when he when Satan is loosed, he gathers together the nations, he deceives them, gathers them together at our feet, till I make thine enemies thy footstool. So they're at our feet, we're up in the air, fire comes down from God and devours them all. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. When this happens, we are up in the air with Christ because we are his people. We are one with Christ. This is all throughout the Bible. Okay, so let's go back up here. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. Now let's stop right there. So we go back to, to uh, uh, like, like uh, the Revelation 1, right? He has made us kings and priests unto God. We are a royal priesthood, right? So just like what we read in 1 Peter 2, we are a royal priesthood. We are a king of priests. Right? He has made us kings and priests unto God. And if we can go to Exodus 19 again, we see that he has made us Where am I at here? Oh, not Leviticus 19. Exodus 19. Pardon me. Alright, you shall be a kingdom of priests. So right now, we are a kingdom of priests. We that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. We are the scholars and the experts and, you know, kings of God, priests of God, those of us that are born of God. That's not it's not just a small group of people on TV. There's no man above you but Christ Jesus. All right? You know, Paul talks about it. It should be just uh, common sense that you are a king and a priest of God. We see, it, we see it all throughout the Bible. Okay. And I saw thrones. So as a king, you have a throne and you have a crown on your head as a king. And we read about how um, the unsaved have a mark on their forehead. They don't have, where they don't have the crown of righteousness that is on our head. So right now, we have eternal life. We are the chosen of God. We are a royal priesthood. We are kings and priests of God right now. Judgment has already been given to us, and that judgment is eternal life. We have eternal life right now. We that are born of God. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, that's us. We that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are kings and priests of God, and kings and priests of God right now. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. Now this, you know, being beheaded thing, this is, you know, goes all the way back. We read about John being beheaded, right? And so people after John were also being beheaded. People today are being beheaded. And I point out this Aerosmith song because it even talks about kings and queens and guillotines. Guillotines are a mechanism used to chop people's heads off. And that happened to John, and that's been happening ever since. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast. Right? In other words, these people are saved. And the people that worship the beast and his image and receive the mark are the unsaved. All right, and the saved people live and reign with Christ a thousand years. 
during this time period when Jesus has come and made available for whosoever believes in me shall never die, right? This is the time period from his promise to his return when it's fulfilled. He is the resurrection. He is the first fruits of the dead, right? What's that verse I'm thinking of here? The first fruits of them that slept, right? Jesus is the first resurrection, and we are partakers of that resurrection when we are born of the Spirit of God. The rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. See, we are partakers of that resurrection, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. On such the second death has no power, right? Whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Believest thou this? The second death has no power. We shall never die. We that are born of God. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. It's a unique time period from the time of Jesus when he came when he came uh, when he was manifest in the flesh to the time of his return when the thousand years are expired Satan shall be loosed just like what we read here in Exodus 19 in this time period in Exodus 19 is when there's a circle of people a group of people the children of God the children of Israel and outside of that circle the nations, those nations, were being deceived by Satan until he was cast up, that is, until God was manifest in the flesh, which is Jesus, that they should deceive the nations no more. And Jesus says, The nation of God shall be, or the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bearing, uh, bringing forth the fruits thereof. So now, at the end of the world, Satan is loosed, and he gathers together the unsaved. Right? Very simple stuff. Okay, and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog. These are nations uh, being represented here that are deceived by Satan. To gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. That means there's going to be a lot of people that are not saved. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. And that's the people of God, the saved. Those of us that are in the air with the Lord Jesus. And fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them all. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat up on it from whose face the earth and heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. This is parallel with what we're reading in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21 where it says the sun shall be dark and the moon shall not give her light and the stars of heaven shall fall and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken where the face of the earth and heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. It's the same thing. It's not a different thing. It's the same thing. It's at the end of the world. It's on Judgment Day, the great day of the Lord. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And now judgment is very simple. Are you saved? Are you not saved? That's the only judgment. There is no other judgment. That's the judgment. Do you have one sin or do you have zero sin? If you have one sin, you're cast into the lake of fire. You, you're, you die the second death. If you have zero sin, then you have eternal life. The only way to have eternal life is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, to be born of the Spirit of God. That's the only way. For Jesus to cover all your sins. So therefore... 
In the eyes of God, you have zero sin. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And the judgment is, are you saved, are you not saved? And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Remember, the second death has no power over us that are born of God. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. All right, so they're destroyed forever. And this is why when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, the whole earth will mourn. Men's hearts will be failing them for fear for what is coming on the earth. They're going to know, everybody's going to know, it's the end of the world. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. It'll be great that Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven because that's when our redemption is, when we are lifted up and changed in the twinkling of an eye, when we will put on immortality, we will take off corruption and put on incorruption. But think about all the unsaved people. It's going to be worse than anything they've ever experienced their entire life. The worst moment possible is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. For them, it is the worst thing ever. For us, it is the greatest thing ever. Alright, so I think it's important to understand, one, that who you are. You're not just a lowly nobody. To the unsaved, you're nobody. But to God, you are a king. You're royalty. And that's going to prove out. That's going to prove out that way at the end of the world when you're up in the air with the Lord now, all the unsaved are looking up at us but think of the unsaved right now they, they have an opportunity just like the opportunity that was given to you they have that opportunity now so I think understanding all this uh, you know it, it makes it all the more important to preach the gospel to the unsaved so that they can have a chance because when Jesus comes there is no more chances so right now if you love somebody preach to them the gospel you can't put your hands around their neck and make them believe all you can do is preach the truth and then trust God that God will work in them but it's absolutely critical that we do this now before it's too late you dig all right all right thanks for watching thanks for watching leave a comment your thoughts anything at all